This video is continuing in the series of videos that I'm doing, heavily requested by you guys, where I take my most popular past blog articles, the ones that the most guys read, that the most guys have commented on, that the most guys ask me about and talk about, and do video versions of those to A, update that content, and B, present this in a video format for those of you who never read those articles. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the confusion, a lot of confusion, that men have when they look for a long-term partner. They think that quality is the most important thing when in fact happiness is the most important thing and quality doesn't necessarily equal happiness. I will explain. I am Caleb Jones, this is Alpha Male 2.0. I make a high six-figure location independent income while dating multiple attractive women and I show men like you how to do the same thing. So as always when I do these videos, my blog article is right in front of me here. I'm gonna read through it and I'm gonna occasionally pause and update it and give you more detail on it. But if you get what this article says, if you get what I'm about to convey to you in this video, it's gonna save you, in some cases, a lifetime of problems. Because a lot of men misunderstand this. And I've had a lot of guys comment on this article even though it's like six, seven years old. And I'm very happy to update it now. So here is the article and I will, as always, pause and give you updates. What I'm about to describe is the largest source of confusion among both men and women when it comes to selecting a long-term partner. Yeah, women have this too, although this is a bigger problem for men. In a nutshell, the problem is people focus on the quality aspects of the person rather than the happiness and harmony within the relationship. Right, what is the goal of being in a long-term relationship with someone? Is it to be with someone really amazing? No. That's not the bottom line goal. The bottom line goal is to be happy with that person, to be more happy with that person in your life than if you were with some other person or if you were single. That's the bottom line goal, right? Right, and sometimes guys will confuse this. They will poo-poo happiness and go after quality. That might work, but sometimes it won't. I will continue. Let's hypothetically say you have two women, girl A and girl B. Both girls are of equal age and equal physical and sexual attractiveness to you to cover for those factors. They're the same age and they're both equally hot to you. Equal, okay? You personally consider both a nine in looks and it's a complete toss up as to which one is better looking. They're identically hot. Where they differ are in the non-physical aspects. Okay, this is important. Girl A is extremely intelligent with a high IQ. She is college educated, articulate, classy, and worldly. She has a high paying cerebral job, such as a nurse or accountant, okay? Girl B is, while not dumb, is about average in intelligence. She got decent grades in school, but never went to college, or perhaps went for a while, but didn't finish. She can carry on a decent conversation, but she can't get into the deep topics that girl A can and isn't nearly as knowledgeable about as many things. Girl B has a low-paying, labor-based job, such as a waitress or nanny. Those are the aspects of these two women. Now let's talk about their behavioral manifestations. Again, I'm just being hypothetical here. I'm not making any generalizations about real people. All right, so moving on. Girl A, because she's smarter, more educated, more experienced, and more knowledgeable about life is stronger, pickier, more demanding than girl B. She's also much easier to upset and much more easily flustered than girl B. In a relationship, she has more rules and standards she will expect from you, her husband or her boyfriend to follow. Because of this, she tends to be bitchier more often than girl B. I'm not saying girl A is a bitch, because she isn't, so make, make clear on this. I'm not saying she's a dominant, I'm not saying she's a bitch, I'm not saying she's a bad person, I'm not even saying she's a bad girlfriend or wife. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying she is clearly bitchier than girl B, if you make the comparison. Right, as a matter of fact, I have said before that in my anecdotal experience, but I have a lot of it, I have dated lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of women over the past 15 years, and I've talked to hundreds of you about dating lots and lots and lots of women. And so in my experience from all that stuff, and I've said this before, women who are really, really smart 
If you just take that one factor, women have really high IQs who are really smart tend to have more fucked up lives than women with average intelligences. Not dumb women, I'm not talking about dumb women. If you compare a really, really smart woman with a woman who is very average and intelligent, not dumb, average. Most likely, in my anecdotal experience, but there's been a lot of it, the smarter woman's gonna have more drama, more problems, more chaos, more problems with her family, her boss, her ex-boyfriend, her friends, her finances, whereas the average girl, average intelligence now, not average person, average intelligence, is gonna live a pretty even keel life. Not a lot of problems. I've seen this over and over and over again. It wasn't part of the article, but it's a subset to that. All right, now let's move on. Girl B. Girl B doesn't have any of this overhead. While she's still a woman and can still get bitchy and dramatic at times, yes, I have said that women of average intelligence, women who are submissive, women who are more traditional or whatever, are still girls. They'll still give you drama and problems. They're still women, yes. She is much more flexible and easygoing than girl A. Yes, generally speaking. Girl B really doesn't care what you do with your life as long as you're happy when you're around her. She doesn't issue demands or have the sometimes impossibly high standards of male behavior that girl A has. This makes girl B more relaxed and happy most of the time as compared to girl A. Now, the article says, here's the question, and the question is in bold. If you knew everything above regarding both women, all the good and the bad, which of those two would you choose to make your serious girlfriend, OLTR, or wife, if those women were your only two options? Now, to be clear, I'm only talking about serious girlfriend or wife or live-in girlfriend. I'm not talking about someone you're dating, FBs, MLTR, someone you're hooking up with, someone you're dating casually, someone you're dating for fun. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about serious relationships. Which of those two women would you pick, assuming they're both equally same age and equally hot? I know which one I'd pick. It's not even a contest. Moving on to the article. At least 85% of men out there, perhaps even 90%, especially those men under age 40, would instantly choose girl A, the smarter girl. They wouldn't even have to think about it. A smart, classy, successful girl over a, quote, dumb girl. Again, girl B is not dumb, but that's what these men would call her. It's no contest. Girl A wins by a landslide. Traditional relationship advice would also strongly recommend girl A over girl B. Right. Who would your mom prefer you to settle down with? Girl A or girl B? Girl A, by far. Who would your friends prefer you to settle down with if they had an opinion? Girl A, right? Your sisters, right? your social circle, your boss, your work circle. The vast majority of these people would choose girl A. Moving on to the article, I am the opposite. I would pick girl B, happily so. But it wasn't always like that. Before I continue, I have to pause and address the objections that I know people will have when they read the preceding paragraphs. The knee-jerk reaction to what I just said, especially if a woman is reading this article, would be the societal programming response of, well, that's because this Caleb guy is clearly an immature, shallow man who can't handle a more intelligent, classy woman. He's such an asshole that he can only be happy with a dumb, submissive girl. If you've already read my stuff, you already know it's actually the exact opposite. Very intelligent women, especially highly educated corporate types, hugely turn me on and I enjoy them very much. I married a woman who had an entire corporate career in insurance over 15 years who has a bachelor's degree. Hello? Not to mention the fact that I regularly date women over age 40, and I am right now. I was as of the time I wrote this article a few years ago. True. I will further address that objection in a moment, but I want to get the other objections out of the way first. What you might be thinking as a man is, well, what I'm going to get someday is a girl like girl A, but without any of the bitchiness or the demands. That's a nice thought, but you're falling into the same trap women fall into when they spend years, if not decades, looking for the perfect man, the myth of the submissive alpha male that I've talked about in the past. You know what I'm talking about. It's when women spout off crap like, I want a strong, masculine, take charge man who is powerful and makes a lot of money, but at the same time, he'll respect me as a woman and do exactly what I say and take out the trash whenever I tell him and never sleep around because he's a gentleman. A man is either an alpha or a beta. He cannot be both. Yet modern day women waste a huge amount of their youth and middle age looking for the submissive alpha, a man who literally does not exist in nature. I've discussed this in great detail before in past blog articles and videos. When you as a man start looking around for quote, a sweet drama-free girl A who lets me do whatever I want, doesn't exist, 
you start falling into the same trap, seeking a female personality type that does not exist. Right. A woman is either a dominant, submissive, or independent. She's not all three. And whatever she is, you'll have to accept the negative aspects that come with it. Correct. And you should do this in advance. So when you're evaluating a woman for OLTR, you should evaluate those negative aspects that you don't like and ask yourself, can I put up with these? Can I put up with these next 25 years of my life? The answer is no. She does not qualify for OLTR in your life. Very simple. I did the same thing when I was evaluating Pink Firefly to settle down with. Could I handle the negative aspects of the things I didn't like about her? Yeah, I could. Granted, I'm sure you could come somewhat close to that, i.e. a girl A who is not quite as demanding and bitchy as other girl A's, but you get my point. If we agree there's no such thing as a powerful, successful, masculine alpha who's a good little boy and always does what he's told, then the feminine equivalent must also be true. Correct. Correct, because I've seen men do this. Not as much as women, but I've seen men do this. I'm gonna find a woman who's really smart and really badass and has a great career and is really and you know has a good college education, but she's gonna be a sweet little sweetheart who's gonna suck my dick whenever I want, and she's never gonna tell me what to do, and she'll never divorce me, and whatever. No. Guy Disney. That means that generally speaking, and yes, God damn it, I know there are always bizarre or rare exceptions to every rule, but generally speaking, a highly intelligent, classy woman is going to be more demanding and bitchy, and generally speaking, a nicer, sweeter, happier woman is going to be less intelligent or at least have a less dynamic, interesting personality. That's just the way this works, folks. You can't have everything. To think otherwise is Guy Disney. Exactly. To address the third and last objection, one I know I'm gonna probably see in the comments, this does not mean that you must date stupid or low quality women in order to have a harmonious or low drama relationship. No, I'm not saying that at all. If a woman is actually a complete dumbass or a drug addict or self-destructive or whatever, of course you wouldn't get serious with her. I harp on guys for getting serious with low quality women all the friggin' time. Yes, and I do. Over and over again, I see guys who move in with women or get serious OLTRs who have massive jealousy problems, who are blatantly stupid, who are hardcore drug addicts, alcoholics, have massive drama in their family lives. What the hell are you doing? So no, I'm not saying you go look for a low quality woman to settle down with. The opposite is true. Stay away from women like that. Or if you cannot control yourself emotionally, and many men can't, Keep her as a distant FB only. I'm going to repeat that girl B is not stupid or low quality. She's just not as high quality as defined by societal programming. That's an important point, as defined by your culture and your friends and your family, but not by you. You define what's quality, not your mom, not your dad, not your friends, not the TV, not your buddies on the internet, not your red pill pals. You define what quality is. As defined by societal programming as girl A, I'm also not saying that the only choice is between a bitchy, high-quality woman and a nice, low-quality woman. Cool? Cool. All right. Let's get back to our two girls. Why will most men choose girl A in a heartbeat knowing that over the long haul she's going to give him more grief than girl B? Because of societal programming, inexperience, lack of self-awareness, lack of relationship experience, and I say in here, not sexual seduction or dating experience, but relationship experience. The reason I said that is because there are lots of guys who are pickup artist types who have fucked 50 women, 80 women, 120 women, but they have no relationship experience. And whenever they get, they get into relationships, it's a clusterfuck because they don't know what they're doing. So those guys count. And a few other reasons, that guy is focusing on her positive qualities rather than his own long-term happiness. Exactly. You're focusing on woman quality and not your long-term happiness, which should be the priority in Alpha Male 2.0. He sees girl A, sees how smart and successful she is, comparatively speaking, and his analysis is instantly over. Her positive qualities is all she sees. Hell, more than that, he thinks he's hit the fucking jackpot. She's hot and smart. Oh my God, the perfect woman. At least not in most cases. If he's a beta male, he instantly leaps into oneitis, starts kissing her ass, and makes all kinds of commitments to her. If he's an alpha male 1.0, he lectures his buddies about how she's, quote, not like the rest, how he, quote, knows what he's doing because he's, quote, fucked lots of girls, and, quote, how Caleb Jones is an asshole and doesn't understand. 
then he slowly, ever so slowly, starts transforming into a very different man under the weight of betaization. I've seen this happen many, 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 many times to many, many, many men, including my own father. In both cases, a few weeks or months down the road, these men deal with drama, demands, arguments, and bullshit from their new quality girl A, girlfriend, OLTR, or wife. Maybe they put up with it and think that it's, quote, worth it. Maybe they don't and suffer a breakup. Either way, they've suffered. Right. I'm different. I don't like to suffer. At all. I don't like to feel negative emotions. At all. And that's true. Chapter 2 of The Unchained Man talks about how negative emotions are not required once you're over the age of 25. You don't need to feel negative emotions. You just don't if you're over the age of about 25. You don't. There's no reason for it. Instead, I like to fill my life with nothing but 100% positive emotions. As much as is possible, of course, since you'll never live a 100% positive life, no matter how good you are. I've said before, you can design a perfect life, but you know, every once in a while you're gonna have things like your mom's gonna die, your dog's gonna die. So you'll have, you'll have random and usual events that'll make you unhappy, but the core of your life is happy. So when a high quality but demanding woman comes along, I might enjoy sex with her under the context of an FB or MLTR, but I don't get into any super serious relationships with her. Right, I've, that's literal. I've been in MLTRs and in FBs with these kinds of women, and I'm like, that's it. I'm drawing a line at MLTR. We're not going past that. I don't want to deal with her drama or demands down the road. That will disrupt my happiness, and no one is allowed to disrupt my happiness long term. No one has that right. And no one has the right to disrupt your long-term happiness, assuming you're over the age of 18. So if you're an adult, no one has the right to disrupt your long-term happiness. Not your wife, not your girlfriend, not your children, not your mom. Nobody has that right over you. Of course, you can live the Alpha 2.0 lifestyle that this blog is all about. Of course, if you live the Alpha Male 2.0 lifestyle, it's never a choice between girl A or girl B. You can have both, and I often do. True. What I'll do is date girl A and girl B at the same time, as either an MLTR or FB, my choice depending on the woman. Over time, one or both of them will float away and then come back, as I've described before. I have a 94% return rate with all women, and that's still to this day. That still holds. I get the benefit of both. Occasionally, I will come across a girl A who is not quite as demanding, or a girl B who is a little smarter, and she'll be upgraded to serious MLTR or perhaps OLTR candidate. What I will never do is make all kinds of commitments to a woman just because she's super smart, educated, successful, or whatever. Likely she'll be a girl A, and most girl A's will not make an alpha male very happy in the long term. Short term, yes. Long term, no. I say that a lot, you'll notice. Short term, yeah. Long term, no. Anything will make you happy short term. Long term, no. Over the long term, it's usually inevitable. Eventually, as you age, that you'll have to pick one special girl, even if it's in a non-monogamous open relationship or marriage. Then indeed, you'll have to make a choice between a woman who is more like girl A or one who is more like girl B. Again, you cannot have perfection. You cannot have a sweet, ever happy, submissive girl A. Not possible. Stop with the guy, Disney. You're going to have to choose between a little bitchier and more demanding or a little nicer and flexible, knowing the negative downsides of either choice. Right, the girl B may not be as exciting or engaging as girl A. That's the negative of the girl B. When in the mode for looking for a serious long-term woman like an OLTR, which by the way, I am right now, so I must have written this uh, back when I was screening, not screening, but uh, promoting women to OLTR candidates, pick fireflies probably in there, I'm sure. I will typically lean in the direction of a girl B. My long-term happiness is far more important than a list of positive qualities a woman could have. Right. Because I've talked about you should make a list of qualities you want your future OLTR, the woman you settled down with, to have. But I say, every time I say this, I say, keep that list as short as possible. You make this giant list that's a page long, you're a girl. That's what women do. Don't do that. When I was younger, in my early 20s, less experienced and more needy, I was the exact opposite. This is true. And a lot of you younger guys in this category now. I was constantly looking for and screening women for a girl A. I wanted a smart, quality girl. If she was a little bitchy or demanding or strong, hey, that's cool, that means she's smart. If she screamed at me later, eh, who cares, we'll deal with that later. Plus, she'll never do that, she's not like the rest. 
sound familiar? And of course, I suffered all the usual drama and relationship problems in my early 20s that all other men suffer. Those who choose a list of positive qualities over their own long-term happiness, while conveniently ignoring or downplaying a woman's negatives. And that's it. So if you are in the phase of your life, mid-30s, where you are looking to settle down with someone, or maybe early 30s where you're looking to get a girlfriend but not move in together, because again, per my rules, no girlfriends before you're 30 years old, no moving in with a woman before you're 35 years old. But if you're in that zone, I strongly suggest you think about this. I strongly suggest you focus on what will make you happy rather than what will be societally acceptable. This is really an outgrowth of monogamy versus non-monogamy too, right? Monogamy is societally acceptable. Everyone will love that you're getting into a monogamous relationship. Everyone will pat you on the head what a good little boy you are. And then you're going to be fucking miserable when you want to fuck someone else and you can't. Or you can be non-monogamous and a lot of people in your life are going to look at you a little funny. A lot of people look at me a little funny. But you're going to be happy as fuck. I choose happiness. You should also. A side note to this, you can watch this video right here where I talk about how you don't need to date a lot of women. Certainly if you're in the OLTR mode, you really shouldn't. It makes it easier. But I will see you in the next video. I hope this has helped. Have fun. Bye.